JJ, the CPA here. This is the second part, if you will, to talking about self-employed individuals, sole proprietors, and independent, uh, independent contractors. So in essence, in part one, I covered the PP, PPP for self-employed individuals and unemployment for self-employed uh, individuals, independent contractors, the, the federal unemployment. And I talked about Schedule C and 1099K and the 1099 and the Schedule F, uh, all being items that uh, you would want to have and use and going to go and get the PPP and kind of overall theme is in that video, we just really have no guidance on how to determine the starting number for the PPP, which is what is your income for the PPP purposes? Because whatever your income is, that starting figure, that's what you divide by 12 times 2.5 to figure out what your loan is. So bottom line is, is, is that the gross? So the, the big question is, you know, is it the gross income from your sole proprietorship or the net income that's your starting figure? So check that out. And then if you've watched that one and now you're in this one, thanks for coming in to tune into this one. And I had indicated that I would do a close up on this in the last 30 seconds. So I will do that in this one. I wasn't expecting to go to two parts on the self-employed. So in this one, I wanna really focus in with the self-employed, okay? on the EIDL, AKA the COVID-19 disaster loan, okay? Basically there's a $10,000 amount. Uh, you get it only at the SBA.gov, only at SBA.gov. And so if you um, go to, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this right now. If you go to SBA, Dot gov. Okay, th this whole video is about this, about how you get 10 grand. So it comes up and right at the top, there's a yellow strip uh, that says coronavirus COVID-19 uh, COVID apply for economic injury disaster loan. So right there, you can just click on that thing and then it's gonna immediately take you to the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan application. So a couple of things on this. First, it's either or, it's PPP or the EIDL. The EIDL was already in place before the PPP rolled around. Here's the big difference, okay? If all you can qualify is 10,000 or less, this would probably be your best bet because you just don't have to pay it back. On the PPP though, you might be able to get more money there and then this is forgivable, but you do have to spend it on qualified expenses. Okay, you have to see other videos for qualified expenses. So if I was talking with the client and we were running the numbers, okay, and it turned out they really weren't gonna get a lot on the PPP, so it made sense and they applied for the EIDL. So you can't get both because they're for the same purposes. And the government's gonna know because you're getting both of these with the government and it's just literally a crime to get both, okay? So AKA COVID-19 Disaster Relief, SBA.gov, right at the top you click and then boom. To start answering the questions, okay? Now, if you are talking about the COVID-19 disaster loan, the $10,000 and it's only online, um, you're supposed to be able to get that money right away. Now you're not gonna be able to apply for the PPP, but if you do, for some reason, somehow, um, let's say that it's determined that you go, I'm gonna do the COVID-19 because my net income from my business uh, is $30,000. And so if I were to take 30,000 times 12, divided by 12 times two and a half, it's not that much. And I'd get more from the COVID-19 EIDL, okay? Well, 
if that's the case on the net, that might make sense. But let's just say you get the EIDL, like a client of mine did right after talking with them tonight. But let's say that they finally come with some guidance and for whatever reason, we finally find out and that the PPP is based on the gross. So that might be a different sort of circumstances, right? So let's say that your gross is $100,000, okay? You know what, it's late. So let's go with an easier figure of that. Let's say your gross is 120,000 on your Schedule C or your Schedule F, okay? All right, well, if it's 120 grand and we get to go with the gross, we would take that 120,000 divided by 12. See how I went with the easy math? So that'd be $10,000 average a month times two and a half. That'd be 25 grand if it's based on the gross. You'd be like, dang it. You know, I went and got the COVID-19 because we didn't know and it was on the net. Well, you can get the PPP, but whatever amount you come up with. So let's just say we, we go with the numbers I just said, you know, you go and get the 10,000 EIDL. Okay, I'm talking about self-employed individuals in this video, not S-Corp owners, not partnerships, not people with payroll, okay? You go get the EIDL, you get your 10 grand, or let's say you did that before the PPP even came alive, because on uh, April 1st, I mean, we're talking, this is the third business day ever that the PPP ever existed, right? So you could have even gotten this before you knew about this because this was around before that. Let's follow this. If you get to go on the gross ultimately, which right now I'm telling you we don't know, and that gross is 120,000 at the top line, okay? Or you have a 1099 for 120 grand and it's not net of the expenses. So 120 grand divided by 12 is 10,000 a month times 2.5, that's a $25,000 PPP. Well, you can still get the PPP, but you're gonna have to disclose that you got the COVID-19, okay? And you're gonna subtract the $10,000 from it, okay? And here's just the catch, okay? The PPP is a forgivable loan. And initially you'd be like, well, who cares? Because the EIDL, you get the 10 grand, you never have to pay it back, okay? You get your PPP, you have to subtract down the amount you qualify for the PPP to then actually take home what is due to you for the PPP. Now, what does that even mean in English? What that means is, if this comes up to 25 grand, but you already pulled the 10 as a self-employed individual, you could get another 15,000 on the PPP. Now, here's the rub. The rub is, that even though the PPP was reduced down in this example from 25,000 down to 15,000 because they already got 10,000 with the COVID-19 EIDL, 10,000 of your PPP will not be forgiven, okay? So don't get me wrong, you can still end up with the 25 grand, right? You could end up with, you could get, we're just talking about money in the door, right? You could get your 10 from the EIDL, you qualify for 25 here, but you have to back out 10 because you already got it, so you only get 15 here. And you go, well, JJ, I got 25K, I'm good to go. True. And you say, but JJ, I don't have to pay this back. And this is a forgivable loan. So does this even matter? What I'm telling you, April 1st, what I understand it to be is, yep, you got your 25 grand, okay? You don't have to pay this 10 back. So of the 15 that you got from the PPP, okay, only five of it is possibly forgivable. 10 of that will be not forgiven and you'll have to pay it back. Now, listen, it's not a bad thing. I mean, you, you got a loan, the PPP uh, loan rate as of today is, is a half a percent and it's over 10 years. So here's the deal. If you're looking for the ultimate, if you waited maybe until Monday, which if today's the first, that'd be the third, the sixth. I bet by April 6th, we have a much better understanding 
of what the starting number is for the self-employed. But here's what you can do in the meantime. Get your Schedule C done. Get your 1099s okay, that you received. Get them all lined up. Um, get your application, you know, the PPP. Fill it out. Put all the numbers down. Fill it out based on the gross, okay? If I'm going with what I just told you here and your gross is 120,000, then take 120,000 divided by 12, and in that box in your PPP where it says average monthly payroll, that would be 10 grand. And then on the application, you'll have to, you know, look at the application for it to really, this to make sense, but on the application, you fill in the box that says, here's my monthly, then it's times 0.25, and then you would, if it works on the gross, it would be 25,000 from the PPP. And then again, it's gonna be forgivable, but we have really no guidance on how it's forgivable. Now I do know this, as a sole proprietor, independent contractor, self-employed, if you're spending money on utilities and rent and internet, um, telephone and your health insurance, um, retirement plan match, interest on loans that you have in your business. You know, those are all going to count, but in the fine print of the law, the PPP, really the forgivable amount, the max forgivable amount for non-payroll, okay, is 25% of it. So all that means is you can't just spend your full 25 grand here on rent, utilities, health insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could, okay, but you wouldn't get it all forgiven. So the big thing to know here is get your app, get into the bank. If you're talking to a bank and they're shrugging at you, go to another bank. Um, hopefully there's going to be a bank that's going to pop up here soon and say, hey, we know how to cater to the self-employed individuals. Um, after I talk with the bank tomorrow and have my client visit with them, um, and we're going to submit. I, I don't know that the banker will even know because you know the banker is still relying on on any kind of information from the SBA. Um, but the big question then will just be: Is it based on your gross? Is it based on your net? And then once we know that, then we'll know. But here's what I'm here's my here's my overall point: Don't wait. Get the application filled out. Get your documents. Go to your bank if if they're not available because they're probably flooded and busy and you know a banker there, email it to them and say, hey, I wanna submit my PPP, I have all my documents here, I filled it out, I took my gross, divided by 12, there's my beginning number. And, and if the bank is gonna be able to jump on it, you'll know right away, okay? The banks make 5% on this, so whatever they give out on behalf of the government, they're getting a 5% fee, so banks are gonna be motivated. And then the good news is in your area, if you're self-employed, independent contractor, sole proprietor, you probably know others. So if you could find a bank in your area, I bet you'd be a superhero if you could let other self-employed, sole proprietor, independent contractors know, hey, I went to this bank, they knew how, how, to, how to make this thing actually work so that I can get my money. All right, hey, I think I've covered everything that I can. Um, thank you for watching. I'll have links in the body here. Um, and just double check in before I end this, if there was anything else, uh, that I wanted to go over. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it. You subscribe. And then I'm going to just hold this, um, camera up for about 30 seconds. So you could do a screenshot if you'd like of what I wrote up here. All right. Self-employed individuals. Hopefully we'll get some answers soon. You guys deserve all the relief. Just the same. All right. Let's see. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, let's see if I can get it all. Okay, I think it's all, it's all in there. Just do a screenshot. All right, did you get it? You got it? All right, well, while you're still got there, you're getting ready to see a little subscribe button pop up. Love it if you'd subscribe. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in and good luck. JJ, the CPA out. Thanks.